Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we are going to jump right in. I'm not going to wait for anybody to come on. You could watch this live if you get your notification, or you can just watch the replay at your at your convenience. So glory to God once again. Good morning. That's not just a greeting. It is a prophetic declaration that we are declaring and decreeing that the morning is good. One reason it's good is because you got up. Hallelujah. All right. So we won't uh, prolong that. Listen, welcome to day two of the grace period. And we're calling this the grace period. Let me tell you why. Again, you know, this year, uh, Lent started yesterday on Ash Wednesday, which was February the 14th, which was also Valentine's Day. And if you followed my ministry for any length of time, you know that I love numbers. And so one in four equals five. Five is the number of grace. And so we're calling this the grace period. The fact that it started on the 14th, that's just what I felt inclined or led to do. Okay. So that's my ministry. So I can do that. Okay. So the five, five, the grace period. And we know that a grace period is a time, is an opportunity that is, that is extended to an individual or to, you know, it's a, it's a period that you, where penalties are waived. And so we just thank God for this grace period, that this is a time that we get to uh, focus on the things that need, the changes that need to be made, the adjustments that need to be made, glory to God. And so that is what this focus is, the grace period. So Lent, Lent is a time of fasting and well, this is the working definition for it. It's a time of fasting and regret for one's sins that is observed on 40 weekdays from Ash Wednesday through Easter. Now, we know, we know uh, in Lent, it's uh, 40 weekdays because Sundays are off. So we talked about that already. Um, but I, I like I like that in this definition, it said that it's a time of regret. So, yes, we want to be heartily sorrowful and we want to uh have a lament and a, and a and a contrition for what we have uh how we have messed up or how we have missed god yes that that, that that's healthy okay however we don't want to stay in the space of regret we want to move through these 40 days uh with a mindset of reset. We want to move out of regret. Yes, we we are heartily sorrowful. And because we are, we are moving towards solution. God is not calling us into a place and a space of despair and depression and 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 being uh under sh and shame and embarrassment and no 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 God is calling us to a place of where we understand and we we realize hey this is where I've missed it this is how I messed up uh, but here are the here are the changes in the adjustments that I need to make and that I am making it. Hallelujah. And so today, last yesterday, I shared with you an acronym BOW, breaking our will. This is where we're breaking our will. You know, our flesh has its own, it, it just does. Even in even in this Lent season, even though you have decided to fast. And even though you have decided to pray, your flesh does not necessarily want to abstain from the foods or your, or or uh, or abide by the timeline that's been set. You know, with your fasting from, let's say, from the time you get up to 12 noon or to 3 o'clock in the afternoon or you're fasting until 6 p.m. Or, you know, if you're fasting, you know, all day, a 24-hour cycle, if you're just doing a water fast or if you're... Um, you know, fasting away from what we call, uh, if your fast entails the Daniel's fast, which uh, really is no meats, no sweets, no treats, uh, just vegetables. You know, whatever your whatever your whatever your uh, your fasting entails, 
your flesh that is used to consuming what it wants, when it wants to, and how much of it it wants to. The flesh does not want to be on lockdown, but that is one of the beauties of this season of Lent is because it is our opportunity to remind our flesh that it is not in charge. It is not in control. It is our opportunity to get realigned with the things of God. And I'm playing, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm playing this song of consecration and I'll post a link, a YouTube link on, on Facebook because I think that in order for us to be successful during this period, that we really get the most out of this Lent season, that when these 40 days will have expired, we will not be a people who just went through the motion, but we want to have receipts, we want to have results, and we want to have resolves. We want to have been strengthened in areas of our lives where we have been weak. We want to be built up in those places where we have been torn down. And so this is why we are engaging this time of uh, consecration. Consecration is the pulling away, the setting aside, coming away from the carnal. Now listen, carnality is not only sin. There, there, there are things that are carnal, that are just natural, that have nothing to do with sin, missing the mark, or messing up or displeasing God. You know, watching a good movie that is not uh, full of vulgarity or profanity or, you know, uh, uh, just immorality, you know, that's a, that, that's, it's carnal, but it's not sinful. It's enjoyable. And so during this time of, of fasting, we are not, not only are we turning away from sin, we are turning away from the things that, uh, that just pleases the flesh. And we're, and we're sowing, we're sowing, S-O-W-I-N-G, to our spirit. So we're listening to the word. We're meditating on the word. We're listening to worship music, like what I'm playing here. We're, we're, we're not jamming to, you know, our favorite R&B artists and our favorite jazz tunes and our favorite rap artists or whatever your, your, your preferred musical genre style is. No, you are enforcing spirituality. You're enforcing it. So, so every moment that you have, you know, that, 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 that is your discretionary time that you can, can choose what you're hearing and what you're feeding on. And I'm saying that because we're, you know, we're, we're, we're still working. We're not on a 40 day vacation. So we don't have 40 days of 24 hour cycles of just discretionary time that we're just doing what we, what we want to do. Okay, so there are times that you cannot help what you're being exposed to or what you're having to be involved with. But for those moments and in those instances and in those times where you can control what you're listening to, what you're watching, what you're exposed to, you are being intentional during these 40 days to make it be about things that are building up your spiritual man. So that is what consecration is all about. We are coming away from the natural and from the normal. We're setting ourselves aside for the things of God. We're giving ourselves over to God. We're not spending exorbitant amounts of time on social media. As a matter of fact, if it's not a necessity, you come away from it. Now, obviously, we're on social media right now, but this is a noble uh, engagement. This is right in line. We're, we're, we're discussing Lynn. I'm edifying the body of Christ, even as I'm edifying myself. We're not on here scrolling and posting and reading people's posts and getting caught up on the, the just the, the, the foolishness of the day. No, ma'am and no, sir. I'm going to tell you that as we are consecrating, this is a time of consecration, and then I want to move to my next term because my time is leaving me. Okay, so we, we, we're in consecration and consecration necessitates concentration. Concentration is a focus. It is a, it is a steadfast, a deliberate focus. What are we focusing on? Again, it's the same thing. We're focusing on the word of God. Get you materials. Get you get in the in the Bible. Uh, find some commentary that uh, that that as we are intending 
to tap in and tune into God. Read the Psalms, read the Proverbs, okay? Because what we what we also want, and we'll talk about this as we get over into more days. Right now, I'm just uh, setting some foundation. But this is not a time for condemnation. This is not a time to beat up on yourself and to feel bad. This is a time that we are uh, exploring the word of God, the presence of God, the power of God to make the necessary changes and adjustments in our lives. So it's consecration and then there's concentration, which is a focus. We are focused. We are clear. We are deliberate as to, as to, uh, as to what we are doing in this moment in time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are allowing God and the presence of God, the power of God, and the word of God to uh, have a, a, a dominant place in our lives. That we're not just being casual about the things of God. We're, we're, we're being very, and, and it's not just something that we're doing on a Wednesday or a Saturday, Sabbath, or, or a Sunday. You know, we're, we're not just being spiritual on those specific days. For these 40 days, our spirituality is something that we are emphasizing every day, all day long, not just at certain points of the day. And that is why we're talking about it's concentrated. It's concentrated and we are concentrating. We are not distracted. We are not discombobulated. We are not, uh, but we are focused. We are bringing and keeping ourselves into a focus. And so we're engaging in consecration which necessitates concentration in order to give us the opportunity to really have examination. We are probing our hearts. We are probing our minds. Remember, one of our foundational scriptures is uh, Luke chapter number 10, verse number 27, that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and with all your strength that you got to put some muscle work to this, that there are some actions that we must engage. There are some behaviors and protocols that we must engage. And so we're, what are the actions? We're going to be prayerful. We're praying. What is praying? Praying is talking to God. Mm. Like listen to the words of this song. Lord, I put my hands in yours. Yes. Oh, oh, now I see. It's you I need, and with your help, I'm denying myself. I put my hand in yours. That's where we are today. We're putting our hands in the hand of God. We're seeking the things of God. Okay, so I want to give you our scripture for today. And our scripture for today is First uh, John, the fifth chapter, and uh, verse number 21, and it reads, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. So go read it for yourself. Read it in the Amplified. I posted the Amplified version on the Facebook page. Keep yourselves from idols. That And, and listen, idols are not only graven images. Idols are not just uh, uh, stone carvings and pictures that you're bowing down to, but anything that is taking precedence in your heart is an idol. And we want to keep ourselves from that. So listen, as we are in consecration and we're in concentration, we are in examination of our hearts. I want to honor the timeline that I established. I have only a few seconds left before we get to the 14 minute mark. This is the grace period. I want you to embrace all of what God has for us today in this season. So I'm over the 14 minute, but I'm not gonna go to 15. So again, so John, 1 John 5 and 21, and then Luke chapter 10, verses, verse number 27, that we are loving the Lord with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. And so, yes, remember our overarching theme for this Lent season is falling in love with Jesus. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. Peace in your going out, peace in your coming in, peace in your uprising. 
peace in your down setting. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. I love you in the name of the Lord. God bless you. God has called us to ministry. God has called us to